and uh, we're here at the Gallery Studios in Ottawa, Ontario uh, recording the new album so uh, let's go inside and see uh, what we're working with here We won't distract him too much. This is where the magic happens. Let's go over here. That's beautiful. This is going to be where I'm uh, tracking my stuff. It's a very futuristic album. Let me show you my gear. I've got my classical guitar. I've got my tuning pedal. I have my backup tuner in case this messes up. Got my nail file. <laughs> Got my chair. Microphone. That's pretty much it. You're so high maintenance. That's all you need. Now let's go check out Raf recording cello upstairs. So like the album itself is is uh, in honor of my friend who passed away when I released the first album, the one who helped me re-release it yeah, properly. The, the, yeah, the re-release. Yeah. What's his name? His name is Adrian Bromley. So he he like helped me re-release the album, and then just as it was finished, he passed away. And so I wanted, and so to me like this location is symbolic because like a lot of like souls kind of pass through it into the river and kind of like because it's like a location where it's like. So many people have passed away. In like a, it's like a, it's like a really warm place. But I want to like record the river just behind the garden, just like get some sounds from there, and then like start the album and end it with that. Sure, this kind that's, of like that's super easy to do. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be, and it would only. I only want like, like five minutes in total, like maybe a minute and a half at the beginning, okay. and like. Well, let's just like choose an time. afternoon this week. Because also like on another level, um, there's this uh, Norwegian metal band that did this album called Light of Day, Day of Darkness 
which is a one song, like, you can't even flip through it, it's just one song, 60 minute, kind of like epic metal thing with like all these other things, and that was kind of the inspiration as well for this, but I don't want it to be just one song. But also like, that is connected because Adrian brought that band to North America and they performed that in its entirety. So it's like he brought them here, and then like when they had his memorial show, like they played that song. So this is kind of like my own interpretation of that kind of piece, but in like a neofolk kind of thing, but mm-hmm. still in honor of his passing. So that's kind of the the concept, I guess. That's awesome. So yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, but anyways, Wednesday maybe we could just record at that at that location. How did you meet Andrew? Adrian. Um, Adrian, sir. He was a journalist who wrote for Unrestrained magazine. And he uh, it was just like metal magazine. And then he reviewed my album and he really liked it. And then when he heard it, he was like, well, I want to help you like get a bit more exposure. So he helped me like get my album to the point where it's like the nice CD. Like he was like a big part of that. I couldn't really, well, I could have possibly done it myself, but he was like pushed it forward and like got me kind of known a bit more. Mm-hmm. Like he got me reviewed in some places and just was like really supportive. So he kind of like took me from like here to like here. And then, like, just as it was finished, he, like, passed away. So it was, like, crazy. How did he pass away, by the way? Uh, it was pneumonia, I think. He was, like, wow. he's, like oh, I, I talked to him on, like, a Friday, and he's, like, oh, I have kind of, like, a chest cold. But he was, like, go, go, go. Like, he never uh, took a break. So I was, like, oh, man, you're sick. Just take, a, just take some rest. And then on Monday, it was, like, so. But he was, like, in his sleep and stuff, so. At what age? Uh, he was, like, 30 something late 30s I think so he was pretty young but he was like the kind of guy that just everyone loved because he was always just helping people out so when he passed away all these like metal magazines and websites were like rest in peace Adrian Bromley because he had been in the journalism for like 15 years doing reviews and promoting bands and stuff so he was kind of like the people's like journalist sort of so slash neo folk Lover. Yeah, well, he was down with everything, right? So he was like, he was down with metal and like neo folk, and he was really like open to that, to all that kind of stuff. So I wanted like this, like I couldn't have gone to this stage without him. So this album is like dedicated to him. So that's the that's the idea. All right. So we're gonna go grab that shit. I'll, I'll just wedge the side door here. So you just walk back. Actually, the front door is not locked. No, it's not, so I just... We're going to grab shit. We're going to go grab shit. This is the album right here. It's going to be recorded on a spoon and a xylophone. Wow, you've been practicing. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm not warmed up. I've been stretched. <laughs> studio recording the new muskox album and uh yeah we're just laying down some guitars today and then we're gonna do some cellos and then eventually we'll do violins um but right now yeah just uh when can the good folk expect this album out um not sure when it's ready yeah hopefully uh hopefully soon the materials we've been working on the material for uh the material's been, yeah, we've been working on it since about 2008. Wow. So it's been a good three years of, of work on the material. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited. I think people who like the first album are probably like this. It's kind of a different vibe, but it's still, uh, still super good. I'm still listening to the first album. Yeah. It's still on my album. Nice. Yeah, this one was going to be a little less uh, ambient, but I think they're going to be nice albums that... Uh, kind of brother-sister kind of albums, so the first one is kind of going to be for more like relaxed times, and then this one's going to be more for when you're on the go, walking around town, on the bus, on a trip, whatever. So I'll fall asleep to the first one and I'll wake up to the second. I think so, yeah, that'll be the, that'll be the vibe. But there's going to be some of that on, uh, some of that kind of stuff on, on this one as well. There's some mellow parts, but in terms of the playing... Some metal parts? Mellow. Oh. Well... Heavy mellow, heavy metal. <laughs> heavy metal. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, what's that? 
That's my genre. I already, I already coined it. I just haven't patented it yet. <laughs> Heavy mellow. Heavy mellow. <laughs> so I have all my fancy gear, my classical guitar, my sandpaper to file my nails, <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. I went to Home Hardware yesterday, and I said, "Where's the sandpaper?" And he was like, "Yo, aisle nine to your left." <laughs> I was like, thanks, man. But Did he you didn't, test it out on your He nail? didn't know that I was going <laughs> to. There's some really rough sandpaper there, but I went for the for the 400 grain. I think that's the best one. Hopefully one day I'll get sponsored. I don't have to, don't have to spend $2 on big... It's actually really cheap, $2 for a big, big sheet. <laughs> Telling us all your tricks, man. Oh, man. This isn't the gear. It's all in here. That was my next question. Why do you have long nails? Because otherwise, it wouldn't sound as good. Because when you, you can get a, a harder sound, but if you play with just... But you have long nails on one hand and then short on the other. It's true, because if these ones are long, I can't hold the chord down. It's mm -hmm. uncomfortable. That's the trick. All my secrets. All right, we're going to get started. Wish me luck.
that was, I think the timing of that was right. So you file your nails, but you don't cut them. I haven't cut them in like five years. Let's six. see these eagle talons. I haven't cut these in six years, motherfucker. What? So you keep that shit good. Look at the full moons on those. Yeah, man. Yeah. What's that? Uh, it sounds good, Dean. I think. I like it's good because I can hear every little, and I want to make sure that I'm clean. Yeah, yeah, because I just put new strings on it and like, those ones are like, and these are a bit like, so.
good that was probably the best take we had so far yeah what made it the best take i don't know you're you were really in tune and everything i don't know your intonation was good and i don't know you played it really well the notes were on okay one more time all right we'll do I'm one more mark that one off as the one we liked okay for me it was like the first half of it was my yeah. favorite okay we're gonna do it again yeah again okay takes are good, what takes are shitty that I need to do again, what things I need to do that I haven't really done. We're basically selecting everything we need to do. It's like a collage. It's like harvesting. Yeah, oh, it's like a collage of takes, but we're trying to harvest the, the good crop and, and throw out the bad crop, basically. But you're not allowed to know that. It's all a performance. It's all one take. Everything yeah. is one take. Less than one take. So what are these double stops? Oh yeah, the, yeah, the last note. I want to see if we have a better in the other take. Who's, who sang on the first album? Is 
that. This hole right here. This yeah. jerk. The ah. No singing on this song. It's not. Did you have to learn that one? Never. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Never. <laughs> you just picked it up. Yes, sir.
<laughs> shy. Fuck. This is Dean. This is the man. Getting Dean. shit done. <laughs> okay, we gotta focus. What the heck are so, you guys doing? We're eating muffins. <laughs> what kind of muffins? It's the only way to make a heavy mellow album. <laughs> True. Sandpaper and muffins. <laughs> <laughs> Title of the first track. <laughs> we can't say the track titles yet. <laughs> uh, okay, so we start at 130 and then to 135 after. I like the first album. It's gonna be less mellow than the first album, a bit more intense. Mostly the band. Of course, he's the only one that's important around here anyway. I want one of my instrumental albums to have the parental advisor. New World's first. Just this music is offensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spot I might consider doing again. You don't have very much Good. of it. Well, if, I, I think this was the point where we started hitting diminishing returns, yeah. right? So yeah, we should probably ditch should all that and start No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ditch all of it. Well, there's, I'd rather there's get some... rid of it so that we know that what we're doing today is good. Well, way, because there's some really good things in there that are worth keeping. Okay. You're talking so, mostly like this kind of No, thing. there's some stuff in there. The Daniel's part for sure. Oh, yeah. Look, I, yeah, I know I don't play very well, but it'll be good eventually. Air Muscox guitar. It's all good, though. It's kind of creepy. That's what I look like when I play. Oh, that's a C, I got that's a C. That's um, this part is mainly uh, good, it's like one or two notes. I mean, occasionally. Other takes to punch it. Let's, let's just try working, working through that a bit. Raph, you're in the spotlight, say something smart. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks smart. Sad muskox? No, he's he's yeah, metal. He's metal. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Nathaniel Larochette from Muskox, and uh, we're in the studio right now working on the new album, and uh, things are things are moving along. You know, it's it's always a slow process. You gotta find the best takes and all that fun stuff that everybody who makes music knows about but I think that the end result is going to be something really good that I think you guys are all going to enjoy. We've enjoyed making it. It's been about 
three years in the in the making and the composing, so it feels good to finally record it. And um, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. So hope that you enjoy this footage from the studio. And um, that's it. <laughs>